everybody. How's it going out there this week? Well, we're back on the Furry Patrol, and today we're going to be talking about convention, a convention kerfluffle that sort of happened um, over, the, over the past few weeks. But interestingly enough, the, the, the sort of controversy that came up really wasn't origined on the convention level. It was more the convention reacted to particular politics that happened in the area at the time. And we're going to go over today how um, that, that particular convention um, dealt with this situation and what that situation was. So, um, so we're going to go, we, our story is going to bring us to Boston or the Anthro Northeast or Anthro New England um, is the name of the convention. If Anthro New England sounds familiar, we have covered the convention um, and another situation dealing with it before on this channel um, up in the cards above. You can watch the um, sort of uh, year in which they were dealing with sort of an overzealous security contractor who um, was being very um, um, restrictive and being a little too hands-on with the furries, um, getting involved a little too much when you know things were just going fine, and being sort of overzealous and sort of being a bit too like lingering in the shadows um, there's more information in that video um, but at the end of the day um, Anthro Northeast had handled that situation um, by releasing a letter and communicating with the hotel indicating the overzealousness of that security issue and following that year of, of that report there really wasn't any um, follow-up on that there really wasn't any or I should say there really wasn't any continuation of the problem into the years afterwards at least nothing that was reported so they had handled the situation quite admirably um, likewise we ran into a situation here but it had nothing to do with the convention itself more to do with the, what the convention had to offer so let us set up the situation that had occurred so over the um, in the beginning of, in, in a few weeks back in August um, there was a sort of a controversial sort of parade that was led by one Milo Yiannopoulos. Um, and they called it a straight pride parade. Um, the straight pride parade took place in the Boston area a few weekends ago. And they had police escorts that were sort of protecting that march of theirs that gathering of theirs from interference from outside individuals such as counter protesters and so interestingly there was a there was obviously some conflict between the escort and the counter protesters which led to several incidences um, and other things so let's uh, let's take a look at a screenshot of this particular um, rally, as it were. This, uh, wait, that's, that, I asked for a picture of this, I asked for a picture of, uh, of the straight pride parade. This looks like a Trump rally. Wait, this is, this is a picture of the straight pride parade? Okay. I mean, if I, I, I have a few questions. Number one, what does Donald Trump have to do with straightness? I, I, I am, I, I don't, don't quote me on this. Don't quote me on this. I might, I might be inaccurate, and I, I will, I will gladly abate my my position if I am incorrect. But I do believe straight sex was a thing before Donald Trump. I, I'm just guessing because I. Th think that had to have happened to have Donald Trump be born I'm just I'm just wondering I don't I don't get the correlation I also don't get a correlation between building walls and straight sex is that a thing like are, are straight people like oh yeah baby build that oh yeah I get down with my honey every night and I like to build walls we we, we we're into masonry like what does masonry have to do with straight sex? I don't get it. I don't get it. 
I mean, it's on there twice. It's like, build the wall, build the wall. It's actually on there three times. There's like, build the wall right there. And it's like, and it has like Trump on there like seven times and like five American flags. And it's like, what do these things have to do with straightness? I think straightness was before. I think we've had straight sex before we've had the concept of a wall before we've had a concept of a Trump, and before we have the concept of the United States of America. Because the babies had to come from someplace, guys. By the way, one other point here. Um, from my, from the, uh, they had a video of the whole parade from beginning to end. It was like two minutes long. Which, <laughs> most furry parades these days don't go, like, if it's under the 15 minute mark, then it's like, what's going on? Like, that's, that's for fursuit parades, okay? Um, so two minutes isn't that long. And most of them were guys. And there was a lot of fawning over this Trump guy. And it's like, yeah, that's the straightest thing I can think of in the world is a bunch of guys getting down and, uh, and uh, sort of uh, fawning over a man in the White House. That's the straightest thing in the world right there. I mean, come on. Like, I've never... Here's the thing. I'll, I, will dis, I, will, I will put an asterisk on this. I will put a disclaimer on this. I've never been to a pride parade, straight, gay, or otherwise. I don't think, from at least from what I can see from news reports of these events, I don't think gay pride parades have much to do with particular candidates or particular issues other than GLBT representation and rights. Right, I don't think, I don't think there's an abortion float in the in the gay pride parade. I'm not sure. I could be wrong. If someone wants to prove me wrong, they can do that. But I don't think it's a thing. So I don't see why building a wall has anything to do with straight pride. And what I'm saying is, if you're gonna go for something, go for it. Don't do this like, well, this is actually what this is for. We're calling it something else. We're 1984ing this stuff and calling it. A straight pride parade when it's actually a Trump rally. Because for some odd reason, we're so ashamed of our president that we can't even call a parade in their honor a parade in their honor. We have to call it something else. That's bad. You know how bad that is? That's, that's bad. But anyways, I ranted enough about this. Um, I'm, I'm, this is completely non sequitur, and I've got to get back on topic. So take it down, take it down. So, needless to say, there was some con, there was um some elements, there was some counter protesters, as it were, um dealing with because, you know, it's it's a Trump rally, so in and you know in Milo is an agent provocateur. There's going to be kerfluffles, as it were. There's going to be some 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 contention with you know people who want to counter those things and make the statement that, you know, the, the policies that Trump has enacted are not welcome. Obviously, a lot of Americans have reservations about those kind of policies, so they get a little heated when people who support that president come along. And likewise, there was conflict in that. And it led to, not only, like, was there um, issues with, like, the law, the people who were enforcing the parade getting a little hands-on with the counter-protesters. But even the, the, the order side of Law & Order got a little bit um, interesting. There are two videos here that I will put up in the cards above um, from One Lettered French on uh, YouTube, um, which goes over a situation in which one of the counter-protesters um, was arrested, and they were brought to, before court for charges. And the prosecutor, um, under the direction of you know, the DA and all that stuff was basically going to drop the charges. And like, they're like, we're not going to make, we're not going to press any charges on the situation. So the, the, the prosecution basically is going to not put up a case. And so what happened was, is that the prosecutor made that statement and the judge basically unconstitutionally and, and, and basically unlawfully said, no, I'm not listening to you we're going to have this trial. This person's going on trial, right? And what ended up happening is that obviously the defense at that point is like, 
you can't do that, judge. And here's the and they started reading out the word of law as to why they couldn't do that. And what ended up happening is, is the judge detained the attorney, the defense attorney, you know, and so you can find out more and more details about the situation. Um, and obviously, you know, after they were released, uh, you know, the defense attorney was obviously released after a little bit. Um, and then the prosecutor, you know, sort of went after the judge um, for that sort of behavior. So it wasn't even just like the law side of it. The order side of it was also very disorderly in this particular situation. And and what what here's what you could say about it is like about this whole situation. It certainly does put a test on our systems of you know of our of our institutions. Like situations like this certainly do put a test on it, and it certainly reveals individuals um, who may not have the best interests of others at heart and at best interest of themselves it does reveal individuals within our institutions for who they actually are as as much as you could say well these kind of like parades shouldn't happen in the first place it does reveal a lot about bad actors within our institutions and it's a very good time and and i think those people in those institutions know it and they keep up like a and they're like very, feeling a very um they're feeling a lot of pressure, as it were, because it's like they know that the whole world's watching now about what they do in their in their things more than ever. Because um, we like to say, well, local reporters are putting a lot less pressure on local politicians, but it's like if, if a local person is making a decision that is pretty significant, um, their 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 behaviors can get worldwide real quick. So. If you have time, um, they're they're pretty long videos, particularly the one about the prosecutor um, and um, fighting the judge. Um, but they're well worth your time if you have time to go through those. So I'll leave those up in the cards above. Um, so all this, what does this have to do with furries? Okay, I'm glad you asked. Now that we got all that, so nothing happens in a vacuum. Um, interestingly. Um, the first time I heard about this causing an issue in the furry fandom was actually from the letter that came out from Anthro Northeast. Or, yeah, sorry, yeah, Anthro New England. I always do that, because there's an Anthro Northwest, A-N-W, and there's an A-N-E, but Anthro, and so my brain keeps on going, Anthro Northwest, Anthro Northeast, oh, it's logical, no, it's like Anthro Northwest and Anthro New England. I apologize in advance. I'll probably do that several times. I keep doing that, even though I know the difference between the two. Um, but there is a letter that came out from Anthro Northeast here. Um, and this, bless their hearts on this, this is the first, like, usually when I hear about controversy coming up through the grapevine in, like, Twitter and stuff, usually it's from, like, some random Twitter users. Um, this is sort of... For Anthro Northeast, this is the first I heard that this, con this this sort of thing was coming into conversation. Was from Anthro North uh, New England itself, right? They they actually made the statement um, that they were going to be looking into this situation. And this was the first time I even knew that there was sort of a, a controversy in within Anthro Northeast. So the controversy is this, is that um, the... the charity that they were working with um, since their founding was called Massachusetts, uh, let me see what it is, Vesta Dog? Massachusetts Vesta Dog. And that particular charity um, provides um, bulletproof vests for, um, you know, canine units within police officer, uh, basically within the police canine units. Um, they put vests on the dogs, and basically that's what they do. Um, so, Anthro North East, uh, sorry, Anthro New England, I keep doing it, and I'll keep on doing it until the day I die, probably. <sighs> so, Anthro Nor New England um, it released a statement here that, a, um, that they heard a lot of, like, they received letters from individuals with concerns about um, police behaviors around counter protesters, um, many of those in the GLBT community. Because obviously, like, if you're having a straight pride parade, it's sort of like a, it was sort of a goad, right? It's like, 
oh yeah, like you know, let's let's get like it's like obviously we we want to see you know you know Milo is like trying to be provocateurish towards you know GLB or the LGBT community and wanting them to sort of counter protest and stuff like that and sort of you know um and sort of goading that sort of response. Um, so a lot of the individuals in the counter protester movement were probably or GLBT or their allies, etc. Um, so, you know, those individuals within the community felt that when the authorities sort of were, um, you know, roughhousing them back and pushing them back from the parades and stuff like that and being rather, you know, aggressive with it, um, felt that it's, uh, it's sort of counterintuitive to be supporting the, the organization that was doing that in any way, shape, or form or capacity, even if it is just providing vests for their canine units. And that's sort of where this sort of, um, this sort of news story kind of gets into a really big gray area. It's like it's, oh, it's, you know... The news is easy, and, and decisions are easy when it's cut and dry, black and white, clear as crystal. It's like, so let's say, like, the, the furries were donating directly to, you know, Boston PD. It's like, and their money was going directly to the officers and all the people that, you know, that they're doing that. Then it's like, yeah, of course there's a conflict of interest because, you know, the people who attend Anthro New England and, you know, could have been part of those counter-protesters and, you know, harmed by those individuals... Um, you know, and, and, you know, had that conflict with those particular groups. And so, you know, that money is directly supporting, but we're talking about canine units, canine units. I don't think canine units were dispatched at all during the counter protesting and all that stuff. I didn't see any evidence of canine units being there, mostly bike units and, um, foot on ground officers. Um, but at the same time. There's like speculation that, you know, if money goes to the vests, then, you know, that, you know, they'll draw money into other things and stuff like that. So money subsidizing anything for the police officers, even if it's just the K-9 units, can be used as an excuse to um, take funds that would have gone towards that and move it towards something else. Um, so a lot of people argued that, you know, taking money away from those organizations um, would be fitting given the circumstances that occurred over that weekend um i just report on this stuff um so it's hard for me to say how bad things really got um it compared to some like i but i am a news consumer um compared to some of the sort of protests and sort of um methods used in protests and counter protests um what happened in Boston over that weekend actually turned out relatively meh. It, like it was, it wasn't anything ground shaking. Thankfully, it wasn't anything groundbreaking or world shaking. Um, you know, we've seen different protests and things over the years um, throughout the United States history. It certainly wasn't a Kent State situation. Uh, uh, Kent State's probably about the worst you can get. Tiananmen Square is pretty freaking bad. Um, this one was, you know, meh. It, it's like some people got bruised. Some people got, you know, some people got some bruises. Some people got some cuts. Um, some people were wrongfully detained and then almost wrongfully prosecuted and illegally prosecuted by one judge. But at the end of the day, the system checked itself. It balanced itself and everything came out, um, you know, relatively fine. But, you know, people are going to say, well... This is that's no excuse. They could still do better, and et cetera, et cetera. The locals of that area know the situation better than I do, right? So it's best to sort of let that sort of go and let the the, the convention board decide. So basically, here they're saying, well, we're going to make a decision about the our relationship with Vesta Dog in a few weeks. This was a letter that they had released on September fifth, um, and saying that. You know we're going to you know, we're going to look at our relationship with this uh, charity, and we'll let you know in a few weeks. Um, so after that, the mainstream media picked up on it. Well, mainstream media, or I should say, 
sort of the new the journalistic blog styles of uh, of news press, modern news press such as Vice, um, picked up on that particular um, letter and wrote a full article on it, which is great because that means I don't have to do it. Thank you very much, Main Street Press. I love it when you guys do my job for me. Um, so. Uh, this is a, it's a very um, long article, and it actually goes into sort of the sort of the the weird gray area that this sort of um, debate sort of provi- provided in this case, um, where it's like it's like do we pull back our the the support for these animals? You know, how often is it is it the animals' fault that they're being utilized by you know police officers, et cetera, et cetera? Is it is it fair to the animal to pull back? simply because of the behavior of their humans, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it goes into all of that and the different sort of viewpoints that furries had over the course of this sort of debate that Anthro North e- Anthro New England was having. Um, so there will be a link in the description below um, for the full article. It's well worth a read. Um, and it does go into sort of the interesting, the, the tough choices that, this sort of situation led um, Anthro New England to have to face. So, just before um, I had recorded this, um, Anthro New England has released its statement. Um, they said they were going to release it on the 14th, and the 14th is coming and gone. And true to their word, they wrote a they wrote a follow up letter um, indicating what their mission statement is um, and indicating that the their final decision is that um they that they their statement basically says the gist of it is um they were planning on sort of moving away from uh, massachusetts vesta dog um in 2021 they were their their plans were for 2020 it was going to be the le- their, their their claim is that in 2020 they were going to have sort of a halvesies. They were going to take half of the charity money and give it to Vesta Dog, and they were going to take the other half and give it to the ALS Foundation. For those of you who don't know, the reason that they were giving it to the ALS Foundation is because of a furry that we had lost um, to, to ALS um, earlier this year, um, who became very well known dog bomb um, you can read about his story. You can watch his story and um, about the, my coverage of his passing um, up in the cards above. Um, so, furries have been pushing for, you know, over this past year in his honor, have been pushing for, you know, funding for ALS um, research and support over over the year, and hope they'll probably continue to do so. Um, in, in 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 you know any capacity that they can, um, they have continued to support. There was a recent um, story about uh, a march that occurred that the the march had raised two hundred thousand dollars, and there were a bunch of furries there. Um, so furries continue to support AL, the ALS Foundation and um, its its causes, even though that doesn't have anything to do with animals. Um, it does have to do with um, a, a well known furry. Um, losing his life to that um, neurological disease. So, um, they were going to do halvesies there. Um, their statement, um, however, says that they had planned in 2021 to move from away from Vesta Dog, but now they are going to move away from Vesta Dog earlier than anticipated. And in 2020... Um, they will be doing the halvesies things still with the ALS Foundation and another charity, but that other charity at this point is unknown. So at the end of the day, they're moving on to a different charity. I will give an Anthro New England this. It has faced very controversial, or uh, it has faced some trials um, in its in its tenure, and. I am continually impressed with how just candid and straightforward and having all their ducks in a row and putting out good press statements. Um, it is, it, it's, it's interesting that even our largest furry conventions have trouble doing that. An- uh, Anthrocon, Midwest Fur Fest, like 
a lot of our furry weekend atlanta etc they have they do have issues releasing public statements um anthro new england has done a great job with it um i am con- like i i i cannot say how much that i appreciate them releasing that by the way me learning it first through them is amazing like because my ears are usually on the ground if something's gonna go down i usually hear about it like recently that whole you know Bioleopolis, oh he's going to bed with surface all of a sudden everyone learned about it i heard about that through the grapevine like three or four weeks ago and i'm like hmm that's interesting and now it's sort of bubbled up into a whole thing um but at the end of the day you know um yeah that's a thing but it's like he's just a dude so yeah but the the thing is like learning through and and providing these these letters um in the way that they have done over the years and they've done that um in in the instances of you know this situation they did it in the the case of the security situation they have a nice little like little bottom cover pin too so it's like a, like a little nice touch there it's like mwah. it's a nice little touch there it's mwah. it's a beautiful i like it i like it a lot it's a good it's a good little thing it's like yeah you know it's it's theirs because they got the little insignia at the bottom it's like those kind of letters like that like i think that a lot of people don't appreciate um when the communications de- departments do their job properly and do it correctly but i can tell you they, they've done a great job and i appreciate we I, I believe i appre- i certainly appreciate um the work that their communications director has been doing over the course of the years um i've seen like you know con- controversies come and go within the furry fandom communications come and go new systems are taught and and try to be implemented um, like for instance, um, the room lottery at Midwest Fur Fest. Um, yeah, sure. There's a website. Yeah, they they they've been doing good with trying to, or they've been doing decent with trying to get social media into communicating with people. Um, but it's uh, it, 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 there's still some communication issues because a lot of people are um, seemingly ignorant as to how the room lottery system works and by the way i am one of them i was i was completely ignorant to it to how it worked until i went through the process to try to do it um you know and in that case it's like i feel like i do have to write something up on it understanding like with my understandings of how that system works to try to help other people better understand how those systems work um which is something i can make a future video on or um and also do a future article on probably but um it's invaluable to have good communication like that it is probably 99 percent of the problems in humanity is improper communication um if you were if you were to deal with any problems in the world and any um contention and and violence and anger it usually stems from improper communication first and foremost and so having having staff that is willing to put the time and put a nice letter together um for print as somebody who's written um articles myself um i know the effort amount of effort and and um work that goes into creating um even a page like that of of words to um to help communicate and put um and try to help put the minds at ease of people who are um you know concerned about the future of you know where the what the conventions um values are and what they place in things so irregardless of whether people agree or disagree with their course of action here at least they communicated their course of action properly and made it clear as to why they were taking the course of action that they were and i my hats are off to them for that um but what do you guys think um obviously there's no really great right or wrong answer here i don't think um people will probably have debates in the comment section as to whether or not this was uh an appropriate sort of um distancing from a charity though according to the communications that you know anthro new england sent out the charity doesn't really 
the charity isn't really leaving on bad terms. They were probably grateful for the money that um, and the support that we provided them since their founding in 2015. Um, and that even though this is over with, um, even though their relationship is over with, that they'll um, continue to try to support, um, you know, canine units and the police departments um, in spite of not having access to, um, you know, furry convention charities to do so. Um, and obviously I wish them luck in the future. Um, thank you very much for watching tonight. Kick that like, kick the subscribe button, kick a comment in the comment section. Keep it civil, keep it nice. I know that, that it's uh, it's sort of a it's sort of a contentious issue, but I'm sure you guys can handle it just fine. See you guys, but see you guys next week.